Hey everyone, Gregory Gordet here from Khan Restaurant in Portland, Oregon. Today we are making a delicious recipe from my new cookbook, Everyone's Table, Global Recipes for Modern Health. It's a gluten and dairy-free cake that's so delicious. It's got Haitian spices. It's tapping into my Haitian heritage. You're gonna love it. Let's get cooking. The base of this cake is a gluten-free flour blend and I'm a gluten-free baker. Even though something's gluten-free, it has to be delicious, it has to be moist. So I have made this gluten-free flour blend which is gonna help achieve that awesome texture. You're not even gonna know it's gluten-free. So I'm gonna take my flours and I'm just gonna sift these up a little bit. So we're starting with almond flour and almond flour actually makes the most of this flour mix. And almond flour is really gonna give it the density, it's gonna give it the bulk. It's actually a great source of protein so it's actually a lot healthier than wheat starch. Almond flour can oftentimes be used one to one but I'm gonna add a few more flours just to get a really nice fine crumb which you'll see when we bake the cake. As you can see this is like a beautiful fine and fluffy uh, flour. We're gonna add our coconut flour. Coconut flour is really, really dry, but this also has an innate sweetness. It's gonna give this flour blend a lot of body. Um, coconut flour is definitely not something you wanna use by itself. You know, when baking with gluten-free ingredients, it's really about the perfect ratio to kind of recreate that texture, that flavor, that density, that springiness that you get from gluten because there is no gluten. So um, we're working with these three flours today to create that awesome texture. The tapioca starch, it's also known as tapioca flour. This is the lightest flour of the three. So if you think about it, you have the almond flour for density, you have the coconut flour for a little bit of depth, and then you have this super fine tapioca starch that's really gonna help the cake have a little bit of springiness and make it nice and light. And as you can see, this is going right through and that's that. So to protect that bottom layer, I am going to cut out some parchment and we're gonna line the bottom of this pan. So I'm just gonna take a little marker and just go right around my pan, just nice and easy. And as you can see, I'm keeping just a, a little bit of room to make this cut a little bit bigger than the pan itself. I'm gonna put it in and I'm just gonna create a tiny little bit of a lip around the edge of the pan. And that's just gonna make sure that all the topping stays right inside. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the oil that's reserved for the cake and just dab this up. I'm gonna take a little bit more and just go around the edge of my pan as well just to make sure the sides don't stick either. So we are going to get into this beautiful, huge pineapple that we have. I'm using about a, a four pound pineapple. I'm just gonna cut nice and easy down the sides. I wanna get all these brown eyes out of there. We're just gonna get all this skin off. We're gonna just get this core out. It's a little bit fibrous. And these are about, I'd say a quarter inch slices. And the thinner you slice them, the more slices you get out of it. And it actually makes the, the cake a little bit prettier. But of course, if you wanna be a little bit short on time, you can definitely cut them a little bit thicker. Um, it's gonna be delicious no matter what. So let's get this sauce going and let's get this pineapple caramelized and sexy. So I'm gonna start with some coconut oil and we are going to make a caramel out of this. So I have some maple syrup. It smells so good already. And some coconut sugar. Coconut sugar is actually from the coconut palm. And we are going to add some cinnamon and star anise. So this actually smells delicious already. The juice from the pineapple is actually going to seep out and create a beautiful caramel. So I'm getting this kind of just going and then we are going to add this pineapple and get this popping. All right, so we are just gonna let this simmer and cook. And as you can see, some of these pineapple slices are already just starting to get a little bit of gold and caramelized and we're gonna let this cook for a little bit longer. Some of the natural juices from the pineapples are going to seep out. It's gonna create a caramel and that's gonna help create this beautiful, beautiful top to our cake. All right, so our pineapple is soft and supple. It's got this beautiful caramelized color. It smells absolutely delicious. I don't wanna cook it all the way through because it does need to caramelize a little bit longer as the cake bakes, but I think it's pretty much there. I'm gonna strain this because we're gonna use our pineapple to create this beautiful layer of the cake and I'm just gonna pour this out. All those awesome spices, that cinnamon, star anise. And I'm actually gonna put the sauce back in the pan because I just wanna make sure that it stays nice and warm and emulsified. And in the meantime, we'll get our cake going. 
So now we're gonna make our gorgeous topping for this pineapple cake and it's super easy and actually really fun. I use my, you know, Chevy tweezers. So I'm just gonna start with some medium sized pieces and I'm just gonna create a nice circular shingle that's just going to create that beautiful layer. Just slowly working your way out. I think this is actually very calming. <laughs> it's something that's really fun. And you'll see that with a little bit of effort, you're gonna make the most beautiful pineapple upside down cake ever. And if you have like really, really small pieces, just save them. We'll kind of fill in the gaps after. So we have a beautiful shingle layer that's going to be the top of our cake. I'm at the end of my pineapple and I actually have these kind of little broken pieces. Don't worry about it, just add them. You wanna make sure you're using everything up. As long as you have a nice flat layer, you can definitely just kind of use these extra little pieces and cheat them here and there. So our pineapple layer is all set. I have some beautiful caramel that was dripping from the cooked fruit. So I'm gonna put this back in the pan and I just wanna make sure this is nice and tight. Make sure that coconut oil, the pineapple juice, our maple syrup, that brown sugar is really emulsified. As you can see, our caramel is just really at this nice stage right now. It got a lot darker and it got nice and creamy. We'll pour this right into our pan. So I'm just gonna try to get a nice circle, try to cover as much as possible. All right, so let's get this cake made. It's gonna be just as fun as the topping, I guarantee it. So we're gonna start with our paleo friendly flour blend. I'm gonna measure out two and three quarters cups of this. We have our flour that's been weighed out. We will save this for muffins for breakfast in a couple days. Let's keep cruising. So I have some warm coconut oil that I've just melted. Coconut oil actually has a really low melting point. It melts at 71 degrees, so you just need to keep it by a warm stove and it will totally melt enough for most cooking applications. And then we have our coconut sugar, tons of sugar because sugar tastes good. This is a healthy-ish recipe, that's for sure. It actually doesn't really taste like coconut per se, so you can definitely feel free to use coconut sugar in tons of applications where you don't really want a coconut flavor. And we are going to add our eggs. One at a time and just make sure that we're just kind of mixing everything in. And coconut sugar is definitely a little bit on the coarse side. So what I'm doing here is just really making sure that this coconut sugar is breaking down. It's emulsifying in with everything and it's not leaving any clumps. All right, so our eggs are emulsified. I can tell that my sugar is nice and mixed in. We're gonna add a little bit of vanilla. Going to add some almond extract. And we'll add a little bit of coconut milk, just to give it a little bit more moisture. And that is all set and ready to go. To our dry flour mix, we're gonna finish this off with some salt and some baking powder. We'll add some spices, cinnamon, fresh cinnamon, 100%. Don't even come at me with the powdered stuff. You gotta use fresh cinnamon. <laughs> I can smell it. It has this really deep earthiness to it. Just really adds just awesome dimension. Smelling this just really takes me back to being a kid and growing up in Queens and makes me think of childhood family and all these great memories. We are going to take some lime zest now and my microplane is in full effect. Just focusing on the bright green zest, all those beautiful essential oils. So now we are going to start adding our dry into our wet. And I'm just gonna do this in thirds. We'll add a little bit. I'm taking my time not to add everything at once because I, again, we did sift the flour, but I'm just looking out for clumps, you know? We are working with three different types of flours and I just wanna make sure this is nice and smooth. And I think we have some cake mix, everyone. Give it a little taste. So we have our beautiful mix. We have our beautiful cake bottom that's going to be the top. We've made that beautiful caramel. So I'm just gonna pour it nice and evenly all over. And I'm just gonna get all this goodness right into this pan. All right, we'll get this in a nice hot 350 degree oven right in the middle, and we'll give that a check in about half an hour, see how it's doing. All right, let's check out this cake. Woo! Smells fragrant. It's got a beautiful bounce. 
This gluten-free flour blend, we've talked about it, it has different properties. So the knife inserted in the center test really doesn't work because it's a very moist cake. So what I do, I temp this cake. And when you hit 200 degrees, you know you're cooked and moist and perfect. So let's see where we're at. I'm gonna go right in the middle. And bam, we are right there. Just make sure the sides are pulling. We're about to flip this and we wanna make sure that the edges are not sticking. After all our hard work, we wanna make sure this flips out nice and easy, right? I have my plate. We're gonna flip this bad boy. So I'm just gonna grab two towels and we're just gonna give it a quick flip. I hear the cake. We're gonna set it down on our board. We'll get out the way. And we will reveal, the big dramatic reveal. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous cake. Glistening with that beautiful caramel. It smells so fragrant. I'm getting all those beautiful spices, the cinnamon, the star anise, that toasty maple syrup, that toasty coconut sugar, the almond extract, that vanilla. Look at that freaking cake. Oh, wow. That beautiful pineapple. It has the notes of the caramel, but it actually has lots of brightness, a little bit of acid, so it's working really well. It's really kind of cutting right through that sugar. I had so much fun making this cake with y'all today. I hope you kind of saw all the little tips and tricks that I have for making this cake. For the recipe, click the link below, but don't fret, there's also 200 more recipes in my cookbook, everyone's table. So get cooking, stay in touch. Thanks for joining me today. Patient or not, it's so many of us have a pineapple lesson on cake that we can remember maybe our grandmother made. It's definitely a cake that speaks to so many different cuisines and cultures.